I wonder, is that is that a common practice to paint before or after? Um, generally speaking, you're going to paint before. Um, now, often what you'll do, let's see where this is supposed to go. Um, that goes, gosh, that's absurd. Let's see what I can do. Okay, can I go? We went in there. Sweet. Um, now, often you're, you know, when you're painting a, a model, it's because you've done 20 of these before. And you've probably done this model kit before, and you know exactly how all this is going to go go together. So you can spray paint very um, specifically. You know exactly what you're doing. Mm. Um, but yeah, generally you can spray paint before. But then you also do some spray painting afterwards for detail and, and highlights. Um, hey, Coachin. Yeah, plenty of fan service in Gundam Sun. You're you're absolutely right there. Um, the problem with GoPro cameras is we need to we need to route all of them through to the live stream. So that is the kind of the, the big big downside there. Um, okay, so I've got that. So now oh now we attach all the little horns on the top of the Gundam because you got to have all the antennae and such. D one, there's a D one. C F. Yeah, sure enough. Love those horns. <laughs> For some of the refined stuff, it's a mm -hmm. little tricky just figuring out which way to position. Yeah. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. One of the nice things about having a no glue model kit is you can always take it apart. So don't despair if you realize something is not in right. You'll be able to fix it. That is to all of those guys watching and gals. Now, just like carpentry, mm -hmm. it seems... A good practice is measure twice, cut, cut once. once. Yep. Very and, much so. and so cross-referencing is the diagram <laughs> <laughs> matching up the part. Oh, yeah. this part is okay. It's in a different position than I thought yeah. it was. Oh, and that's, that's an important point is that often in the instructions, they will rotate a part that you finished into another angle when you're working on it in the next step. So you want to keep an eye out for that to make sure that um, the part that you're working on is not now 90 degrees angle. Um, yes, Chris, we plan to do this uh, in the future. In fact, we're probably only going to do this model kit for half an hour or so. Uh, and then we'll do more of these in the future just because of general time constraints. Um, is that E1? That's, yeah, that's how it comes out. Ah, <laughs> I almost needed a band-aid there myself. Oh, it's a great sense of accomplishment seeing things come together. It is. <laughs> it's <just> popular, yeah. <laughs> now, what is that? That is a little... Thing. It's lawn mowing season, so I'm... <laughs> oh, yeah. That sucks. Um, oh, there's a little horn that goes on there. It clips on like that. And then let me grab, what do we want? We want B3. That isn't what I just did. I don't think so. That's GB3. Ah. What's also worrying is when you go for a part and it's already off of the model kit, uh, already off of the sprues, and you realize, I already used that part. Something's not right. <laughs> so that, that's not good. Where's the, why is this part missing? <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to have, and of course, I'm not exactly a hugely experienced model kit maker, but I've yet to have any one of these come without parts on the, uh, uh, the plastic models. They do a good mm -hmm. job of that. Good quality control. Yep. So the red bit... Hmm. So that goes there, and then the red bit fits on the front. Oh, yeah, the little red doohickey. Um, that goes there. There we go. Uh -huh. And this goes on clips. Ah, that definitely needs to come off. Okay. So I've got a bunch of screw on this thing to cut off. Hmm. That's not going to be happy. Now, some of our more experienced... Mm -hmm. There was a term you used for plastic model kits. Gunpla. Gunpla. 
Yeah, that is the technical, that is technically what these are called in Japan. Gunpla. Uh, Same for Gundam plastic model kits. Ooh. And um, so if you see them in Japan, they're referred to as Gunpla. Gunpla. Is, is that uh, a common term? Or is um, it mostly people who do this know the term and people who don't? That's a good question. Um, I'd say, yeah, generally. I'd say that the average consumer is going to call them a whatever would be the Japanese for toy or model kit or whatever. Mm. But the um, anyone who knows what they are would call them a, a gunpla. Mm. Um, it's kind of like Gundam. You know, someone who doesn't know the, um, Gundam is going to call it a, you know, a robot. Robot. Yeah, <laughs> but we know better. It's a Gundam. That's it's not a just Gundam. a robot. <laughs> it's a Gundam. Those are not just droids. Exactly. <laughs> Those are not robots. Those are Gundam. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody Hello, has... Oh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Hey, Chris. Yep. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty major uh, industry in Japan. I mean, they have a whole um, uh, convention just for Gunpla. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are there any conventions that they have in the U.S. for this? Or? Not that I know of. It Not yet. It's definitely cut off cut on over here. Um... Which is funny because the, the prices are good even in, in America. So you, know, you can buy one of these guys for 15 to 20 bucks um, and then move up. But they're about the same price they would be even in Japan. So you have plenty of options. Well, that's pretty neat because usually yeah. things in Japan seem like they're a different price. Mm -hmm. Much more expensive. I need to get a bit more off of this thing. <laughs> A very tight fit on this particular part. But when it's in there, it's going to look sweet. So let's see here. So, and what's also interesting about Gundam um, is how the plot evolves very. Um, very organically out of uh, a the first episodes, where you don't really understand quite what's going on, but you figure it out as you go on. It seemed that it was coming at me very fast. Mm -hmm. Lots of new uh, people, characters, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, mm -hmm. different crafts yep. that they were working with. And uh, once I started identifying, oh, okay, uh, uh, who each of the characters were mm -hmm. and, and some of the plots. I started getting, getting or, uh, the locations. I started getting into it and keeping track of it. And it's funny how the different sides, uh, the Federation and Xenon have different names for yeah. uh, some of their crafts mm -hmm. uh, based on their knowledge and reconnaissance. Yeah, yeah. how um, White Base is called uh, the Trojan Horse by <laughs> Xeon because, you know, it, it showed up out of nowhere, this... this um, this neutral or um, non-military colony, side seven, or cluster of colonies, side seven. That isn't fitting in there. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> the fun um, of, of figuring out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it goes in that way? Really? That can't be right. Maybe it goes in up there. E18. Where go? Got to fit in somehow. Hmm. So if it goes in there, then it's completely... Oh, no, there it is. Oh. Ah, interesting. It's taking it shape. Right yeah, it's taking shape slowly. It's turning into a Gundam. All right, so there's my head. There's my torso. I think I can pop on. You don't want really to do that just yet, but I'm going to anyway. Ah. Yeah, so at some point in the there. future, we'll we'll see what we can do to get a really good tight shot for you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, macro lenses at some point in the future. Yeah, we're working <laughs> on having several different webcams set up and we can swap between them, but we're just not quite there yet. Um, that's true, but Chris Hunt. They do have uh, contests at Anime Con sometimes. Oh. So you can uh, submit your gunpla. It's often part of the uh, the artist alley. The artists. Um, what do they call that at conventions? The um, artist alley. Um, but the, the there's, artist, always, there's always uh, a little um, area off to the side where they have paintings and such. You can uh, the art auction. the art auction. Yeah, the art auction. They'll have a few things you can auction off or otherwise uh, appreciate. I've seen some amazing gunpla 
built that way. That would be fun. Next time, next time I go to an anime convention, I can go up and look at that and really appreciate all the yeah. work that goes into it. And, exactly. And of course, the story behind <laughs> <laughs> the character. Cool. All right, we are at about half an hour. We've been chugging along here. So, um, where are you actually at this I point? I am little by little uh, attaching little. decals. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> still, yeah. still in the formative stages. Yeah, you picked you, to take shape. You picked a, a, a relatively complicated um, a model kit in terms of number of little bits and bobs on it. <laughs> so it looks like um, you know it's the it's a fairly standard number of pieces, which is lots of little decals and different kinds of plastic. But that's cool because it makes it a much more um, detailed piece. There, there's uh, a lot, the, lot more stuff to the, it. The challenge of details. Yeah, exactly. You're doing great with those, those decals. That's great. The magnifying glass helps quite it a bit. Sure, it sure does. And we, we picked this up at uh, Radio Shack that was uh, going out of business locally for about 20 bucks. So if you can find it or eBay it or something, this kind of stuff is really useful, especially if you have these little clamps. Oops, sorry. Another store that uh, is useful that has some some devices like this jewelers mm. loops and uh uh head uh headband style mm. glasses mm -hmm. that you can pop in different magnification lenses will allow you to do the more refined work nice and when you do a really good job in the small details mm -hmm. the collective of the small details really add up to a big difference in yeah. the overall picture when you're finally done yeah it, it is worth when you're doing a, a gun and model kit, um, to be willing to not be intimidated. When I first did a model kit, I was really scared they would come out looking terrible. So um, uh, instead of instead of worrying too much, you can absolutely start very simple um, and just you know get a fifteen dollar model kit and try it out. And if it doesn't work out, then that's fine. You you pop it into a box. But uh, um, in other words, it, it can be worth getting a starter spare kit and then. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, moving on from there, once you've really gotten yourself uh, familiar with, what's the biggest gunpla I have ever seen in real life? Oh, um, would be the um, I've seen some master grades that are about this. Well, actually, no. Um, well, technically, I've seen the full size Gundam in Tokyo. The full so, size yeah, yeah, Gundam, the, the one 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 to one scale, yes, one to one scale. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, so that, that's a big gun. Um, I guess gun metal. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I've seen that, and then um, I don't think I've ever seen the like meter tall uh, RX seventy eight that they they had. I've seen that on like TV shows and such. But um, um, other than that, in in the in there, yeah, they had some of the, the you know the really big um, uh, big ones all all dolled up, um, and in the. Oh, what's it called? There is a an anime industry uh, sort of space in Tokyo in Akihabara, and they have a there's a little um, space for a quasi museum for current anime works and past anime works, Ooh. and so they'll have a production artwork up there, backgrounds, cells, um, drawings, things like that, and they had a few uh, Gundam model kits up there, so I saw some of. Some of those, and they were some of the, the, the big, really detailed ones that obviously, like somebody at Bandai had actually put together. So, um, so those were those are pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there's there's plenty of stuff out there. Well, now, do people do mixes of different kits? Yes, absolutely. In fact, Gundam Build Fighter, um, what is sort of a celebration of that. Um, one of the things that's ex um, expanded over time is this idea of Kit bashing different uh, Gundam model kits. Kit together. bashing, yeah, oh. um, which is actually it's it's weird. You'll hear um, Japanese people say kit bashu, kit bashu, and uh, and it, which comes from Star Wars. And Star it, Wars, yes. Yeah, so, they, so um, in the original Star Wars film, when ILM first started up uh, to build all of those you know star destroyers and Death Stars and so forth, they would go out and they'd get model kits uh, of you know, tanks and destroyers and things like that. Ooh. And just take out all these pieces and clip them off and just start gluing them onto uh, uh, Star Destroyers and such. And uh, you can actually go and you can find parts lists for which, you know, Panzer tank model kit to get, to get these little bits and pieces. Oh, to, wow. To the, you know, um, certain uh, Star Destroyers. 
Um, and they called that kit bashing. They would just take these kits and bash them together. Um, and so in in uh, 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 in, uh, in, in the hobby, often folks will build their own custom Gundam model kits, and they'll take a bit from there, a bit from there, and make it together. The in best fact, of every character. The <laughs> point, um, it's probably ready there. The interchangeability. So if, wanted to, if I can grab that, mm -hmm. oops, oh, <laughs> I can pop this head right onto that. Look at that. That guy. Interchangeable um, parts. Interchangeable parts. And uh, if, oops, I popped that off for you. We'll come back out of there. There we go. Cool. That will slide right back in. So a person could come up with a completely unique, mm -hmm. never before seen Gundam. Exactly, yes. Um, My and, own personal Gundam. And I mean, if you wanted to, you could file bits off of there, glue new bits on. Um, you could really play around with it and make something really that you really want. So for example, some people don't like the little crowns on these things. Mm. So you might pop that off and not include that. We might file them down, what have you. So lots of different options there. Uh, and it's just, it's really up to your imagination. And so Bandai has responded to this by making their model kits more and more customizable. So um, they're much more on a sort of a central skeletal frame, uh, which you can mm. then sw uh, uh, swap out. Well, wow. And of course you can just do things like color them differently mm. or whatever. And this, this plastic is designed to make, it takes paint really well. So that's another nice thing. Is that, Regular standard standard uh, model paint or you, you can specialized buy, paint. You can buy Gundam. You can buy Gunpla paint. Uh, 